Tony. Wow. The reason we're waiting is because all the other cinemas around the country are now tuned in, so say hello. Hello. Yeah. Exciting. My name is Greg James. Um, and it was an absolute pleasure to watch that, wasn't it? I think you'll all agree. You want to get everyone out of here, really. Uh, Barney, Jimmy, Trotty and Swanee, please come to the stage. It's not the bingo, isn't it? Come in, come in, Bly. Hello, Bly. It's the national. There's the first voice. Um... That was a phenomenal bit of cinema. Barney Douglas, take a round of applause from this audience. Um, I think the, the first thing I wanted to say to you, Barney, is congratulations, first of all. But also, that is clearly made by a fan. You, you are clearly <laughs> a fan of, of this team and the game. Uh, what was, was, there, was there one moment for you where you thought, I'm doing that film? What was the one moment? Firstly, I just say Steve Williams and Lucas and Felix, who editor, cameraman, music, were just as much a part of that as me. So, yeah. like, <laughs> just really quickly, I got to say no, no, that we'll, we'll get onto Felix later because yeah, the music um, is a separate. But uh, to I topic. don't know. I, to be honest, it was just a phone call. I think Talk Call at Noah gave me a ring and said, "Have you got any cricket stories?" Because at the time, I was actually thinking myself of. Um, what could I do? Who do I, who do I know who trusted me <laughs> to make a film about them? And of course, I've been working with the England team for you know four or five years, so um, I had a bit of archive footage. I knew the guys pretty well. I think they trusted me. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, um, and I thought, well, let's let's give it a crack. I wasn't really sure if people would be receptive to it, but for me, they were a great team, and it was, would have been a shame to not celebrate them the way it all ended. You know. Yeah. Well, I think those great details, amazing little touches. It was. It. it, it you're clearly a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, on, of, the, of, of the sport, and you, and you love it, but I, I think it's a really accessible, huge universal story. Um, what did he say to you, Swanee, about the film when he came to you first up? Well, before that, he's a genius, obviously, because he's made the, the most South African hard-nosed white Jonathan Trott make every man cry. Um, <laughs> thanks for that, mate. That was great. That was awesome. Good man. I, I, I wish I'd seen that before I got here now. But With my wife looking at me going, what are you doing? Nothing. Is the pick a mix? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I love Barney. My award-winning diary, Million Hits, um, <laughs> back in 2010, <laughs> all those funny bits of me and Jimmy in the towel. I wish, honestly, one of the greatest things about that, me and Barney were basically given carte blanche to do what we wanted for a, for a diary on tour to try and show the lighter side of touring. And Jimmy was the greatest sidekick ever. The, one of those, when he walks out with a shower and then one giggles, <laughs> I was there, the next scene was me sat on a bed with a pot of Vaseline and a back cone next to the bed, making no reference to it, but chatting away, we're just good mates. <laughs> um, and Barney allowed that to happen and managed to get it past the ECB. Anyone who can do that <laughs> is a genius in my book. So when he approached me saying, look, we're doing this, um, are you interested? I was like, absolutely. Absolutely, I'm interested. I'm, mm. I'm all over it. And, and Trotty, when, when Barney came to you and said, oh, I want you to tell your story, the story that you've not really told sort of publicly, obviously it's in your book and everything, but sort of publicly on screen, were you reluctant to... Were you, did you want to hold back any of the bits or did, what, what was that process like for you? Uh, not really. I think um, with Barney, we, we'd spent so much time with him on tour and we'd done so much work. I think whatever he was going to do and the vision he had, obviously I trusted whatever he was going to do. So whenever he asked for anything, I was more than happy to walk in the Sussex Downs in full cricket kits, getting <laughs> huge stares from some dog walkers and then um, all different sorts of things, jumping in a, in a, yeah, in a, in a sort of makeshift uh, swimming pool in, in Peterborough. But there was um, a good story about the field because he, we arrived there my good mate Sai, who's in the audience, actually picked up Trotty from the seafront, took him up there, and Trotty said, uh, where's the cricket field? And I was like, no, no Trotty, an, an actual field. <laughs> and he was like, all right, and just hopped over the barbed wire and <laughs> just walked up. <laughs> I just thought you were in Gladiator, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like Russell Crowe, this is great, I love this. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I told you, I'm not German, man. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Ten years has been going on. <laughs> It's, uh, you, you made everyone look like the biggest movie star on the planet. I thought it was a really, it was just so brilliant to watch. I sort of can't wait to watch it again. That 
You became sort of a stunt man in that film, Trotty. You, you did your own stunts. You were submerged in water, and I mean, those are just be beautiful, genius bits of, of filmmaking. I thought well, it was incredible. Well, you said to me you were gonna have to weight you down and put some weights on your legs, or whatever. And I was like, well, I'm pretty heavy, Barney. Uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> but actually, you don't realise how Krieg equipment actually floats with all the foam and stuff that's in the pad. So there's actually weights, and it actually took a lot longer. And it was a lot colder than it actually looked, but it was um, yeah, it was worth it. And, but that, that's what I'm saying. So Barney, it's a once in a lifetime thing where, um, you know, what we did was really special, and the, the group of guys we had was really special. So it deserved the attention to detail that Barney was going to give it, and also I was sort of um, helping and make us sort of getting over the line and doing whatever he wanted us to do. Jimmy, when you were in that side and it was at that time, were you how aware of of mental health issues were you at that time? Um, not at all, really. Not at all. I think, uh, or get, you may be vaguely aware of it. Um, in a team like that, I mean, we've had a, uh, a bit of a glimpse of it tonight with the egos in the team, um, and and a couple of others on the uh, on the screen. You know, it was just you just went along with it, and you just you, you, no one was really allowed to show emotions. And if and if anyone cried like me and Swanee have just done, I just I've got to let everyone know that Trotty was sat next to us. I was kind of hiding my face when uh, Trotty was uh, getting emotional on on the in the film. He was he's seen it a couple of times before. He was laughing, <laughs> <laughs> laughing at me and Swanee. Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, we were we weren't. I think it's it's films like this and. Uh, the knowledge of just making people, especially men, making them feel like comfortable enough to to open up to people. Because if you if you do suffer in silence like some of the guys did, then obviously it can cause problems. So I think it's um, it's really important to be able to uh, open up in, in front of other people. There's some unbelievable honesty in that film from the players, but also Andy Flower, which I don't think a lot of people have necessarily seen him. He actually used the word regret. At times, and also that amazing quote where he says, uh, I, "I wanted to, I should have worked with the person as much as I did with the player." And have you seen that change in the current side, Jimmy? Um, Obviously, Andy Flowers not there, but in, ter I in terms, uh, I think that players are just more aware of it now. I think players work with players better than we used to. We used to work, we used to push ourselves in 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 practice, in training. Uh, in the games, we used to swear at each other on the field and really push and get the last every last drop of uh, whatever it was out of each other to try and win a game. Um, but now I think we do we do spend more time away from cricket, trying to make sure everyone's um, actually in a good in a good space mentally. What were your favourite moments? Was there a moment that you were watching that, that triggered a memory and you went, "Oh, I really missed that." D I loved the last 20 minutes and I hated the last 20 minutes, to be honest, because it brings back all the horrible like things that you go through personally when your time's up, when you're through. And for me, it was awful because I tried to bluff it to myself and you feel shame and you're embarrassed. You think your wife is embarrassed, your kids are embarrassed, your mates know that you're not there. And I had to live that all that, that last 20 minutes. I pretended it was Trotty I was crying about, but it was me. Um, I'm far more important. Um, but the, that first hour, I, I, I'd never agree with living life on an even keel. You should absolutely experience the highs and the, the ultimate lows to really get your life out of it, to experience your life. And looking back, I mean, that Bavarian trip, it <laughs> doesn't do it any justice how fucking horrific it was on there. It was the worst four days of my life. The, after three days, Cookie turned up. Well done, Alistair. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to get married or something. I don't know what he was doing, but <laughs> he turned up and he said that Reg has picked me up from the airport and there's shitloads of McDonald's food wrappers all over his car. Reg is our huge ex Hells Angel security man. He's going, sorry, guys, got to live in a fucking field for three days. <laughs> <laughs> and we were moving, we were told pack up, and we all thought, great, we've done the hard yards, we're going to a hotel. We got to another field. He said, put your fucking tents up, boys. Oh my, cr honestly, at that point, I would have walked away from cricket. I thought, it's not worth it. Mm. For that extra night sleeping next to Mark Borden, our psychologist snoring <laughs> in my ear, I want to kill every human being on the planet. And yet, watching that back, I was so proud that we actually did it. And Brez, when I said he fell like a boulder from that cliff, that does not do it justice how, how fast he fell. Mm. Just all, all those, but Finney at the end and Trotty at the end saying, it's the partnerships you miss. It is, it's exactly that. 
I miss Brez more than you would ever believe. Jimmy misses him, even though he's horrifically horrible to him because he's a <laughs> Lancashire Yorkshire thing. But he came out as a comedy genius, Tim Bresnan, from that. And Brett Barney, that's your greatest gift to the world. <laughs> Brez is a natural, <laughs> unlike some people. Um, <laughs> Jonathan, watching that back and uh, and looking at the chart in the highs and the lows of of your test career, would you would you if we gave you the opportunity to go back and do it all again, would you do it all again? Yeah, in a heartbeat. I think um, yeah. what we did and the things uh, that you experienced, I think, is is second to none. I think playing for Craig for England and, and and wearing that cap and going all around the world with your mates is is the best thing ever. I find that really interesting because I think. And that, that separates people who play top-level sport and people who don't. I was sitting there feeling like I was constantly being kicked in the gut, just going, "How do, how are they managing to do that?" I couldn't, and I couldn't believe that sort of the isolation that you felt. And I guess that, that's what that's what separates the top-level people. But th there's small things when you play. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got mates. Fine. Sorry, that's, that's sorry, a film. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> sorry. What I was going to say was, for me, finding out what these guys actually went through there, because I I had my method of doing it, that I, I never even dared ask what theirs were, what they were going through, because we were blokes in a change room, mm. and it's embarrassing, and you, you you're not an alpha male, you've not got self worth if you do that. But I wish I had. I used to go lock myself off for five minutes and stare at myself in the mirror till I was convinced that I would be man of the match that day. Even though I knew I was bluffing half the time, I'd convince myself. And if anyone had ever seen me do that, I would have been mortified. And, and these guys all had similar sort of methods of dealing with it, which I never realised until 20 minutes ago. And I think people watching this film, fans of the game who were just watching it going, oh, why is he batting so badly? It puts it into context. And it's, uh, it's just really fascinating. I, I really loved it so, so much. Can you tell? Um, <laughs> let's talk about... I want a round of applause for Felix White, please, for that score. I mean... <laughs> fuck. Hey. Hey. That's, uh, that is also done by a fan, clearly, we you can the tell. the bloke on the planet as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. I'd suggest. But those, those moments where you had the, the KP moment is really, really sticks out. Uh, it's uh, brilliant. Where the drums yeah. go mad and that's kind of his brain, obviously. And then you've got the bit when you're submerged in the water. How, how, uh, how much did he just run away with some ideas and come back and you were sort of well, we astounded? Sent, we sent, well, he sent me loads of like little demos to begin with. Um, so I think Felix had quite a few ideas to start with. But then as the film changed, kind of it, it got a little deeper and it got a little, sort of little less, I guess certainly the second half funny. It starts to explore some more sort of in-depth issues. Um, Felix kind of basically wrote a whole new batch of music from scratch again. Um, and Sam, who played drums brilliantly. And if you haven't seen it on Twitter, there's a sort of the KP innings and then Sam drumming along to it live, which mm. is unbelievable. Um, it just brought so much life to the, to the film. We didn't want a kind of cliche kind of sports score. We wanted something that kind of plumbed the depths and then also gave you the highs as well. Um, and I think, but yeah, the love of the game and the love of the team really comes through in, in the music and Felix and Sam and Jag as well did a brilliant job. Do you think sports fans in general are, a bit, are too harsh on teams when they're not performing well, Jimmy? Thanks for saying, he was itching to answer oh, that no. question as well. <laughs> I have to um, direct these questions to James. James, James. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> I think, you sort of, I think you sort of selfishly, as a, as a fan of a, a sport, you kind of go, come on, why aren't you winning? What's wrong with you? Yeah. And, and actually seeing what's going on inside the brains of these players is very interesting and, and enlightening to going forward, I think. Well, absolutely. And I, th I think th there's, always a, there's always a deeper story. And I think seeing, um, I think, it, I can't remember who the commentator was, but when Trotty's walking off and going, that's dumb cricket, mm. but actually what he's going through, you know, it kind of feeds into a, a bigger picture. Um, so yeah, I think again I can't remember what the question was. This is why Swanee answers them all. <laughs> but do yeah. you, do you, okay, Swanee, I've got a question. I've got a question. Do you do you offer advice to players coming into teams now and starting games like that? But, it, but it's very hard. I mean, Finney said something on there that was amazing for me when he said he, he read everything. He'd go online, social media, and he'd read everything, and it'd hurt. I used to read everything, but from an old-fashioned sense. I mean, I'm not. 25 and street and fleek like Finney. So I'd read the newspapers. Bless him, he can't. But um, <laughs> but I'd read them. To, I'd just read the match reports, especially if I'd had a bad day. And I'd use that as catharsis to think that no matter what they say about how bad I was today, what mistake I made, no matter how horrific they try to make me feel, they couldn't possibly understand how bad I feel for letting the country, letting my family down. 
yesterday. So I'd read it and go, great, that's all they say, move on. So that was my way of dealing with it. Social media, I wouldn't even dream of reading keyboard warriors and, and, and idiots stuck in their basements like Brez famously did once. Can I just say quickly, we were once told never swear on Twitter. Brez, someone put an overinflated picture making Brez look overweight. Unbelievable. Um, anyway, get out of your basement, you twat. <laughs> and it got on the back page of the mail. Andy Flower came to us and I told you, no swearing. Have a word with him. <laughs> <laughs> so straight away, he went, I won't swear it. And he put on the, the next tweet, stop being a dipshit. <laughs> we said, Brez, you can't put that. You tell, well, dipshit's not swearing. <laughs> love you so much, Tim. Um, I can't remember what the question was either, but... Don't worry, Finney, don't worry. I love you. That was the main point. Yeah. Um, don't read social media. Before we get some... We've got some questions from uh, some viewers around the UK in a second, but Barney, is there one thing that you'd like the, the viewers of this film to take away from watching it? Um, I just think that what I want to do is humanise the people on the screen because you get these caricatures, don't you, through media and all that kind of stuff. And, you, and I'm the same. You watch someone on the field and you just want to... You slate them if they do badly and you, you, know, you kind of enjoy their highs but also nail them when they're low. And I just think like everybody's... Yeah, there's, there's humans in this team. It was a great team. And I think, really, that maybe we... I don't know what the balance is, really, because it's so difficult, but a bit more sympathy and empathy for top sports players mm. um, would go a long way, I think, because, you know... I think they're all out there trying to achieve for their country or whatever it might be. And it, I don't know, just the balance is a bit wrong at the moment, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You realise they're humans, you can talk to them and reason with them, and get, them. And, and get them to take guard in a field in Sussex. <laughs> yeah, which exactly. is a, <laughs> what, That's what the a worst moment. answer. Ever. Did, uh, did you have to take some convincing for that bit, Trotty, taking guard in the field? Um, it was more the bobbed wire that I'd jump over to get into <laughs> that was worrying for me, but um, no, not really. And I, I, that's, well, that's when Barney. Gave us a call and we all got an email saying he wanted to do this. I knew, you know, do a great job with it. So whatever he wanted to do, you know, I was all ears. And, and whenever I was free, um, I think everyone was pretty willing to do whatever he sort of asked. Question for you, Swanee. Um, is there anyone from the England team, this was on, from Twitter, that you can't do an impression of? No, not really, but there's, there's some I enjoy. I, I love the one I do of Rooty. And it's, you must have said, minor caricatures of the person. And I always say that the, the captain should be the most imp intelligent person in that changer. So with Strauss, eh? <laughs> absolutely. Um, very loud. When he spoke, he, you knew subconsciously he was cleverer than you. Um, nowadays with Rooty, he's like, oh, look at Aeroplane. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I like Miles Miles. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's just when the World Cup, he don't care what I say. <laughs> I've got a question, Barney. Are you starting making the film about the World Cup soon? I've already made inquiries. I thought you, <laughs> I thought you might have done. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, a question from Twitter. Is there anything in particular that you learned from your time playing as part of this team that we saw on the screen today that you take forward with you and will do for the Ashes this summer? A uh, few things, actually, yeah. I, watching this film made me realise how much I hate Australians. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I just wanted to, there was half of it, George Bailey smiling at me. Stop smiling, mate, you're rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think <laughs> apart from that, like a, 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 more, a, more, so, a more poignant point was the fact that like there's a lot of, towards the end, a lot of stories about lads um, f having to finish playing and stuff. And I think, the, uh, I think it was Andy Flower says, why do we do it or something like that. Um, and that, uh, I think the reason I keep playing is because I'm able to, but also I, I take with me the experience I've had with these guys and that I, I'm playing, I'm still playing with them, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, because without them, I wouldn't be the player that I am now. Um, without, I know Troy didn't mention me, batting with me, he didn't miss that, but... Um, uh, Guided you just that <laughs> first 150, guided you. But... But I do, I, do, I do take those experiences with me and um, they do, even, you know, the, well, pre every guy that's in this room in that film helped me to be where I am and I'm sure that everyone will say the same about each other. So that's why, that's why we do it. Trotty, you're going to say something? I game in 2009 when I made my debut. Um, we played against England, Warwickshire side, played five weeks earlier and Jimmy sprayed me from day one till the end of day three. 
And then when I got my 100, he came running down the track at, towards me with his batting gear and his helmet and his pads. He looked like, like a gladiator who five weeks earlier wanted to kill me. I thought he was going to whack me or something like that. So I was very, very, um, you know, very, very emotional time, I think, for everyone in your family. But just to see the delight of teammates now, that's what it means when you're playing for England. As five weeks ago, we were sort of having a go at each other. But now we're, we're in the starting 11, you're playing for each other. Um, and that, what, that's what it meant. So uh, it meant a hell of a lot to, to Jimmy. It still does. And I know Swanee and myself, it, it sure means a hell of a lot what we did. And, um, you know, it's a very, very special time. Well, sadly, we're out of time for this Q&A. Um, but thank you very much for, for sticking around. And also, goodbye to everyone watching in other cinemas. Goodbye. Say bye to them. But um, <laughs> It's a very weird setup, isn't it? I think we can all agree. Um, but thank you, Barney. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Swanee. And also, thank you, Jonathan Trott, for your amazing honesty in that film. I think it will... I think it will do... <laughs> The, 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 what do you mean you've got 10 more minutes? I've got 10 more minutes, but it would stop talk and say goodbye to all the other cinemas. You now have 10 minutes. Oh, fuck them. Brilliant. We'll keep going. <laughs> Great. Hey! A few people probably want to go for a piss, but that's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll do 10 more minutes. But I, um, I think that, that conversation about men's mental health is not shown. It's ne barely ever shown on a big screen like this. It's not really shown in, a, in sporting films like this. Uh, it's, it's touched upon in sort of mu in, in music documentaries quite often because you see the, the highs and the lows. But I think the, the words that you said on, on that film will, will help so many people. Have you felt that come back at you from other people saying, thank you for saying those things? Are the cricketers maybe that have um, come to you? No, I, I think at the time it was a slightly different era with regards to, to that sort of stuff. And um, I, I think it's now a little bit different maybe. I think the guys are more open about things. I certainly know, uh, having spoken to a few guys that I've played with, they were so, sort of have come up to me, um, not at the time, but a few months later said, you know, I was probably suffering from something similar. I was going through something pretty, uh, pretty horrific, you know, very different to what, um, you know, whatever you experienced. But it, no one ever said anything. You just sort of battled it on your own. And that was the type of um, environment I think we were living in, not just the side, but I think, um, uh, you know, people in general and society. So, um, but, you know, I, I, I have people come up now and, and they say to me, you know, I, I, I was going through what you were going through. And I was like, well, what, did you have 95 mile an hour rockets coming at your head? <laughs> and I was like, um, you, know, you know, say some left arm slinging gorilla, you know, trying to <laughs> wang balls down at you. And, and, and no, you know, they didn't. But, um, but um, you never lose the hatred, do you? you never lose that. The ashes but, coming up. But it. it but everyone has their own little things and own little challenges and, you know, it's either injury or it's something going on personally or, or something like that. And everyone, um, when you go out there, um, you know, you expect it to perform. And I think the difference now with regards to psych sports psychology and that sort of stuff, at, at, at the time it almost felt like they sort of, you, you had an issue or something and they would just sticky tape you together so that mm -hmm. you could go back out there and um, sort of perform, put you back out there on, on the showcase or, you know, on the show. Whereas nowadays I think it's more about dealing with the actual person, like like Andy said, um, you know, getting to know the person, and so I think that's what's different. Um, just the attention to actually the human side of the person, not what's going out there wearing the England badge and being able to perform. I mm. think that's just a little bit different. So on the surface, the the watershed moment, as you said in the film, Barney, was two thousand and nine. But actually, maybe it was when the cracks were appearing in with certain players. Maybe that's the watershed moment that has that has created a shift now, perhaps. Jimmy, would that be maybe the case? That, uh, what's, what, how, is there good aftercare now? Have things changed since those days? Yeah, there is, of course. And I think um, people are more uh, willing to talk about their feelings. And uh, we've got, we have, a, we have psychologists with us. I, I remember two, 2004, I think, and I, I, I was bowling really badly. And one of the players went, I think you should go and see the psychologist. And that's what what a sports psychologist was back then. But now it's more, it is more just actually, um, not, not just how you perform on the field, but actually there's a deeper side to it. And, there's, and every player's vulnerable, even the best players in the world, even though people think they're robots and machines and go out there and churn out runs or take wickets every time they go out there, there is a vulnerable side to them and um, that needs managing as well as their cricket inside. Do you get looked after now, Swanee? Well, I don't know. Um, 
But I'll tell you one thing that hit me about that. When I played, I genuinely thought I was one of the lucky ones. I, I'd come into the team later, so I had more experience. Um, I gravitated towards Jimmy and Cookie in the change room because they seemed the most phlegmatic, the most like me, didn't outwardly show nerves. And I genuinely thought, I'm nerveless when I play. I don't care if it goes badly. I don't give a shit. I'm fine. And honestly, I, I would I would have sat here and put my kids' lives on that. I, I do not get nervous when I play cricket. Mm. When I finished, and the first day I walked into the Oval to commentate, as I walked through the gates, I physically stopped and felt incredibly like light as a feather. Like There was no weight on my shoulders whatsoever. And I realised for years I'd convinced myself that I was this superhero who didn't get nervous to, to basically perform. And now I was just talking about cricket on the radio, which is a piece of piss. And I knew there was no, <laughs> there was no performance pressure. There was no fear. There was no... And, and, I can't remember on there who said, I think it was Matty Pryor said, it's not the fear of being hurt. It's not the fear of getting hit, physically injured. It's the fear of failure. Mm. And you can, I convinced myself that I wasn't bothered about that. Of course I was bothered about that. You're letting everyone, every day of your career is live on TV with millions of people watching. Imagine you going to work at the office on a stinking Monday, you've got a hangover, you didn't go to bed on time last night, your missus you know, ate your breakfast, Uncle Clive's been around, la da you were, but but it, like but real real life situations. You're bang. You're on TV. There's no way. And and then you've got people hounding you saying, "Oh my, look at him. Doesn't give us toss about his country. Look at what's going on." International sportsmen have to deal with that, and yet pretend that absolutely nothing happens. Mm. Well, I think what I think funny, the key, yeah. and I, I hope it's achieved, is like getting the balance with. It's also the best job in the world. So like, it doesn't. You don't want to come across. I think that the people were like moaning about playing cricket for England because they're not. It was just trying to shine out or get a bit more under the surface in terms of the challenges that they would face. I don't think it does. It's the just they level. love it too much, though. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably, that's yeah. The thing is like an, it's an addiction, isn't it? Imagine trying to give it up. The yeah. thing you've worked for from, the, from when you were a boy, all you've dreamt about is playing cricket for England. Yeah. You would live in your dream and then you realise, fuck, this out, I've got to give this up. Mm. I've got nothing left. That's it. It's horrific. But then I chose to just go, boy, I had a great time. So watch old videos of yourself, not Jimmy. <laughs> Um, only if I took a catch off him. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it, it is it is really hard. When, once you play for as long as you can, so I know you will, because you've got fuck all else to do. But <laughs> once you're gone, it's like, wh how do you possibly recreate that? I mean, you can go on Strictly and wow the nation with your amazing move. But <laughs> oh, God. It's never the same. Except the Mars <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why there's a set that there's Jimmy in between you and Trotty. I've had three wines. I'm not a good drinker. <laughs> That's um, our ten minutes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're nearly. I think we're nearly done. Um, we talked about the upcoming Ashes. We have to just. I, I want to talk about it um, because you are clearly up for it already. Because I saw the fire in your eyes when you were talking about. Um, I think it was Michael Clark's face. It was like a real close up of him. It slipped. It was like a lot of pack of hyenas just sort of laughing. Are you how's your how's your car first of all? Good. Yeah, feeling good. Yeah, yeah fine. Thank good you. news. Um, <laughs> are you ready for it? Are you excited? Uh, for yeah. It? Well, as I said before, I touched on it. There was a few faces in there that I didn't really uh, take to. Um, <laughs> the Michael Clark one, obviously infuriating. Mitchell Johnson as well. Uh, um, <laughs> but I mean, we touched on that. I, I need to get in the nets as well, work on my batting because Swanee said it's not the fear of getting it, it is the fear of getting it because <laughs> it, it kills. It really hurts. Um, so for me, that if I come off the field, if I get out first ball, I don't mind as long as I'm not injured. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I mean, Sunday for me was like the first time since 2005 where I've been a proper fan because uh, I've pretty much played in, in those the years in between. Um, and that really has, I think, in it, like literally I woke up the next day wanting to get in the nets. I wanted to have a bowl, I wanted to play. Uh, so yeah, I think not just myself, but everyone else is itching for those ashes to come around. Yeah, that's the first thing. <clears throat> First thing we all thought when we saw the yeah. cricket whites, we were like, "Oh yeah, Test cricket's way better." <laughs> um, anyway, thank you. We we now it's, it's an actual wrap. Okay, great. We're done. I um, can stay here for an hour though. If anyone's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Swanee will do as many selfies as you like. Thank you to Jonathan, Barney, <laughs> Jimmy, and Swanee.